All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for some real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, so um, before I get going here, I'm going to try something I don't typically do. And uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to do a little bit of a screen sharing option here. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you the, at least a picture of this band that I want to tell you about. The name of this group, Whiskey Myers. Whiskey Myers, they are a combination of Southern rock and uh, country and blues and just real aggressive, but also uh, very real. Uh, if you like country music, but you don't like what country music has become, you can check out their latest single. It's called John Wayne. Uh, the song is number one on the Texas regional radio music charts. And I'll tell you, this is a band that I think you're really going to dig if you like that hardcore outlaw sound. That's what this is about. So I wanted to share that with you. Their new tune is called John Wayne. Um, my good friend Jim, who's out on the road, he's a truck driver and he's also a patron on the channel. We've been sharing back and forth a lot of music, and that was a song that we both kind of really dug, and uh, I think it was cool because it was kind of like that synchronicity thing when you're thinking about someone and then someone else actually has got the same artist going. So it was kind of cool, and I just wanted to share it with people because I've been talking a lot more about country music because there's a lot of good country out there, even some of the mainstream stuff not all of it, that's for sure. A lot of this mainstream country stuff is really not country. That's what I have a problem with. Put it in a different category and then, you know, we can talk about it, right? So anyway, let me talk about um, the band Green Day because uh, Billy Joe Armstrong, who is in Green Day, says that uh, he wants to renounce his U.S. citizenship after the Roe v. Wade decision. Holy crap, Batman, right? So um, my first quick take on this is that here we go again. I remember when Trump won, people were like, I'm going to leave the country, and they didn't leave the country. Now, keep in mind, people, right? So the Supreme Court makes this decision. And whether you agree with the decision or not, what this does is it gives the power back to the people, back to the states to decide what should happen. Now, some states are going to ban this procedure. Other states are going to probably increase this uh, so-called procedure. And in one state, I think it's California, I think they're expanding it. And keep in mind, this is crazy. And I know for some of you, it's, it's just uh, unthinkable, but they're actually thinking about expanding it past the birth of the baby, where even after the birth, uh, the whole Roe v. Wade thing can happen, which to me kind of sounds like murder, right? Just flat out murder. But um, for a lot of people, even prior to that, it was considered murder. And that's what I think one side doesn't understand. We, for those of us who are pro-life, which I consider myself pro-life, it took me a few years after I got out of college to really examine the issue because before I didn't really think much about it. And then you have questions about life and you wonder, hey, when does life begin? And um, so once I really wrapped my brain around this, I'm like, uh-oh. I always thought that this was just, you know, a blob of cells and so forth. But, you know, we all start somewhere, right? We all have a beginning. Um, and if you don't have a beginning, you really can't do the whole life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, right? So I understand the other arguments. I've heard them for years. You know, it's, you know, my body, my choice. Funny how that only works with some things, though, right? When somebody says you need a QR code, to do something and someone says, hey, it's my body, my choice, there seems to be a bit of a blackout that happens, like, you know, doesn't go anywhere. You know, like there's a there's a blockage somehow where people can't understand that. 
But then, you know, you throw this back at the other person and say, well, the other issue, right, with uh, Roe v. Wade, aren't there two bodies uh, that we're talking about here? Although they would consider one of those bodies not really a body at that point. So it doesn't really matter. Kind of like if somebody's living in your house and you consider them not a person. Well, they live here, but, you know, they're not really a person because, uh, you know, they're not fully grown yet or some just you could come up with some analogy that's better than the one I just came up with. But the point is, it only seems to apply, right, when we're talking about a certain issue. And people are militant. People are violent. People are threatening. Uh, and this little stunt here where Billy Joe Armstrong is going to renounce his citizenship, I say, well, oh, go ahead. I mean, don't let the... Uh, Screen door hits you on your way out. I mean, what? Uh, look, I understand that people are passionate about certain things and they use their celebrity to raise awareness and to call attention to things. But it seems as though we really don't have a pro-life agenda in general. Uh, old people are in the way. They need to hurry up and, you know, get on with not being here anymore. Um we don't seem to want to take care of people the way we used to. And then that other little pesky issue that's been going on for two plus years that I talk about here and there without going into too much detail, I think there's an agenda, right? And even if it's not a cohesive, organized agenda, it, it still would seem on its face that something weird is going on where people don't have empathy, they don't have compassion, they don't have uh, concern for their fellow human beings anymore. What, they concern, what they're really concerned about is their right to do X, right? Their right to do it, no matter what. When there are so many things that can prevent uh, that from happening, and still there's no responsibility taken by those people. So as a last resort, this basically ends up being a form of birth control. That's what this is. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with human rights because you can easily <laughs> make the argument on the other side that this is exactly 180 degrees from human rights by saying that, hey, I should be able to do this to a human being, right? So again, I think what is being omitted from a lot of the news coverage is that this, uh, this will go back to states and states will figure it out. States will decide. The people will decide. That is the democratic process. This should not be decided by fiat. There is no constitutional provision for this anywhere. And if you somehow find one, I think you've made a mistake. They've said for years that the original decision was on very flimsy legal ground. And I think that's why uh, we're here today talking about how it has been overturned. It wasn't very good law to begin with. But as far as a rock star going out there, and by the way, you know, th really, this band here, we're going to worry about Green Day, you know, I, I, whatever. I mean, there are people who hang on every word of certain individuals thinking that they are the authority on this. This guy just launches into a tirade, a bunch of F-bombs coming out of his mouth and um, says that we're effing stupid as a country and we're a uh, miserable effing excuse for a country and blah, 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 and just keeps going on and on. He says this, of course, while he's on foreign soil uh, in London and uh, basically saying that he's probably going to stay there or he might move there. Great, you know, and here's the deal. Um, Americans need to be the ones that have our in-house debates and arguments going on foreign soil and, you know, telling people in that country where you are who are probably really sympathetic to, to your views, but maybe not everybody. But then again, if you're going to a Green Day concert, <laughs> you're probably very sympathetic to their views. Um, I just find this another way to divide people and to make people angry. And rather than just looking at what this is really about, you know, if you want to keep doing this, 
California, New York, Oregon, um, Washington State, uh, the northeastern part of the United States, the entire northeast, all of New England, New York, New Jersey, um, all of those places are going to be, quote unquote, safe havens uh, for doing something that's not safe and certainly is not something that uh, should be celebrated. I remember when this uh, political slogan was very popular, it was safe, legal, and rare. Rare, not safe, legal, and abundant. It was rare. It was supposed to be rare. People, even the current president of the United States back in 1986 said this. Uh, he basically was in a different place at that time, and he had all of his cognitive functions, maybe, and uh, the political winds were much different in those days where people weren't really excited about this the way they are now. They seem to actually enjoy uh, what they're doing to what could be their own offspring, which to me shows that we are a country in moral decline. Somebody comes along and says, nope, we're not doing this anymore. And then all hell breaks loose, which is really sad. So. I wasn't going to cover this on the music channel. I was thinking of maybe doing a video for the political channel. But then I saw, <laughs> I saw Billy Joe Armstrong, right? And I'm not that familiar with Billy Joe because I'm not a big Green Day person. But apparently, he's made a lot of statements like this before, just unhinged, crazy stuff about Trump. I'm so tired of, I mean, Trump. I mean, you've beat the guy into the ground. You impeached him twice. You had hearings for a week about something that happened at the Capitol, which didn't even compare to what happened in the summer of 2020, didn't even raise a little blip on the Richter scale compared to what happened all summer long that year. And then, of course, we had the lockdowns and the chaos and uh, people losing their jobs and all of that. But that's, hey, you know, it's just collateral damage for, you know, the policies that our government and so-called health officials put into place. Nobody seems really that outraged about that. There are some of us that are, but people are really ticked off about this because you know what? It puts an end possibly to their irresponsible good time, you know, which is sad to say, especially in the midst of all of the uh, birth control that's available out there. I just don't understand any of this. And it's not healthcare. This is just, how is this healthcare? What is this curing? Oh, is it curing something? Is it, you know, is it, is it like an, a surgery where you remove something that's not wanted? Sounds like that's what they want it to be. Really sad people. Anyway, I'm sorry, went off on a big tangent here. Don't forget to check out the song John Wayne by Whiskey Myers. If you're a rough and tumble whiskey drinker and uh, you enjoy some good hardcore outlaw style music. Whiskey Myers has been doing this for a long time. And I figured I'd throw that out there to you all, even though I don't have the CD with me. Typically, I like to show off the CD, but you know, I can't buy every album, but maybe, maybe I'll buy a couple of these. And I will put them on display somewhere in the shot here until we meet again. Have a great time. Have a great day. And um, you know what? Think for yourselves. Think for yourselves. Don't let anyone tell you how to think about any issue that's important to you.